why krishnamurthy to me personally he is one of the very few educationists in the entire world who has influenced impacted and inspired me beyond measure and he is one of the very few educationists who has given an amazing holistic theory of education today i'll be doing a review of his amazing book titled on education a very inspiring book that every teacher and educator has to read for sure and this is the book for you in his talks discourses or speeches or in his writings he has always emphasized on a holistic learning theory of education so why a holistic education Well, the answer is quite simple a holistic education empowers you or it empowers an individual well now you may be tempted to ask how does a holistic education empower an individual well the answer lies to a great extent in this book a holistic education caters to each of the five spheres of the physical the emotional the social the spiritual and the intellectual health of an individual but how many educational institutions today cater to all these five spheres in more of an individual's growth well this book is the outcome of talks and discussions held by J Krishnamurthy with the students and teachers of Rishi Valley School and Rajgat Besan School so what is this book all about this book i would say from all personal experience has the power and the potential to transform your perspectives your outlook your approach to your life and to everything and everybody around you for the better as it has done for me now you may be tempted to ask what is the need for a new kind of education It's because education should have a harmonious balance of intellect and sensitivity of intellect and sensitivity a harmonious balance is needed but unfortunately today's education teaches us how to develop our intellect but conveniently ignores the most important component on sensitivity what then is a real education krishna murti has an amazing answer for that to j krishna murti education is not only learning from books memorizing some facts but also learning how to look how to listen in short to be sensitive so what is sensitivity sensitivity means to be able to devote some downtime exclusively to listen to the call of the birds to see the sky with awe and wonder to see the extraordinary beauty of a tree with such passion to see the shape of the hills and to feel with them to be really directly in touch with them to be really directly in touch with them says krishna murti and this is at another interesting part that i so loved about krishna murti he talks about paying attention and what does he mean by paying attention probably we might have thought that paying attention and concentration are the same but paying attention according to krishna murti is an extraordinary thing and he says attention is something different from concentration attention is something different from concentration says krishna murti because it is an extraordinary thing so how do you pay attention I guess this is something that we should have it etched in our hearts forever 
He says, when you concentrate, you don't see everything. But when you are paying attention, you see a great deal. I repeat, when you are paying attention, you see a great deal. Now pay attention, he says. And then he tells the students, look at the tree and see the shadows, the slight breeze among the leaves. See the shape of the tree. See the proportion of the tree in relation to other trees. See the quality of light that penetrates through the leaves, the light on the branches and the trunk. See the totality of the tree, he says. Have you ever asked yourself why you want to be educated? What is the point of being educated? What is the point of your passing examinations and getting degrees? Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why on earth do I want to be educated? Krishnamurti gives us some wonderful answers. So why do you want to be educated? Is it to get married, get a job and settle down in life as millions and millions of people do? Is that what you're going to do? Is that the meaning of education? Human beings are educated to conform, says Krishnamurti. Human beings throughout the world, whether in Russia or in China or in America or in Europe or in this country, are being educated to conform, to fit into society and into their culture, says Krishnamurti. But wait! Is that what you call an education? asks Krishnamurti. Is that what you call education? Or is education something entirely different? He asks. Talking to his students, he gives us the real meaning of education. He says, to educate in the real sense of that word is not to transmit from the teacher to the student some information about mathematics or history or geography but in the very instruction of these subjects to bring about a change in your mind. To bring about a change in your mind. But do you think such an education is really possible? Yes, says J. Krishnamurti. When is that possible? When you are extraordinarily critical. I repeat, when you are extraordinarily critical, you have to learn Never to accept anything which you yourself do not see clearly. Never to repeat what another has said. Never to repeat what another has said. I guess this is a coinage by the legend J. Krishnamurti himself. He talks about a second-hand human being. Who is a second-hand human being? Or what makes a person a second-hand human being? To Krishnamurti, a second-hand human being has an easy way of living. They like to repeat and say what other people say, do what other people do, because it is the easiest way to live, to conform to the old, existing pattern. So, how can you ever come out of the second-hand human being existence? He says, listen, just listen. Listen to everything, to the birds, to that cow calling. Learn about everything in yourself. Because if you learn from yourself, about yourself, then you will not be a second-hand human being. Now, one of his students asks him this question. The world is full of callous people, indifferent people, cruel people. And how can you change those people? One of the students asks him. Now, Krishnamurti gives a beautiful answer that I so love. He says, Why do you bother about changing others? Change yourself. Otherwise, as you grow up, you will also become like them. You will also become indifferent. You will also become cruel. So the simple thing is, change yourself. 
as i thought is a very important part of the book where he talks about the function of an educator so what is the function of an educator he gives an answer a memorable answer he gives if i were a teacher here do you know what i would do first of all i would want you to question me about everything to question me about how to look how to look at these hills to look at the tamarind tree how to listen to a bird how to follow a stream i would help you to look at the marvelous earth and nature the beauty of the land the redness of the soil so krishnamurti says i will make you look which is to make you sensitive and you cannot be sensitive if you are careless indifferent to everything that is happening around you then i would say to be intelligent you must know what you are doing the way you walk the way you talk the way you eat i repeat to be intelligent you must know what you are doing the way you walk the way you talk the way you eat now a student asks him If you are very sensitive do you not think you are apt to become emotional What is wrong with being emotional he asks When I see those poor people living in poverty I feel very strongly is that wrong So what is wrong with being emotional he asks At the same time when someone says something bad about you something wrong about you something ugly about you also you feel strongly isn't it When this happens how do you respond what will you do he asks Here Krishnamurti gives a very interesting answer he says because of your emotion will you hit back at him or because you are sensitive emotional will you be aware of what you are going to do if there is an interval he talks about an interval here an interval before your response and your observation and you are sensitive to it then in that interval intelligence comes in allow that interval and this is where j krishnamurti stands out and stands tall the parent in him comes out here i would say he says i wonder the other morning when i saw you all having a good time what is going to happen to you all will you live a life with a fire burning in you or will you become for the rest of your life a businessman or a housewife what are you going to do should you not be educated to burst through all conformity he asks his kids for most of us who have been thinking that learning and acquiring knowledge are the same krishnamurti begs to differ i wish you would grab a copy of this book to read for yourself a comprehensive understanding of the difference between learning and acquiring knowledge but here i would like to give a very crisp understanding of the difference between learning and acquiring knowledge krishna murthy's answer here is a real eye opener i would say acquiring knowledge makes you mechanical but learning makes the mind very fresh young subtle says krishna murthy acquiring knowledge makes you mechanical but learning makes the mind very fresh young subtle and you cannot learn if you are merely following the authority of knowledge says krishna murti so see the difference between acquiring knowledge and learning however krishna murti feels that most educators right through the world are merely acquiring and imparting knowledge and so they are making the mind mechanical and incapable of learning you can only learn when you do not know he says i repeat this wonderful sentence by krishna murthy most educators right through the world are merely acquiring and imparting knowledge merely acquiring and imparting knowledge and so they are making the mind mechanical and incapable of learning you can only learn when you do not know so yes when does learning happen when does learning happen this is a real beauty from krishna murthy So I'll be repeating it once over. You learn most when you have no fear, when you are not threatened by authority, 
when you are not competing with your neighbor then it is then that your mind becomes extraordinarily alive i repeat you learn most when you have no fear when you are not threatened by authority when you are not competing with your neighbor it is then that your mind becomes extraordinarily alive he says then he beautifully sums up the difference between learning and acquiring knowledge he says when one is learning it is an active process i repeat when one is learning it is an active process whereas acquiring knowledge is merely gathering information and storing it up personally i guess even a google or any search engine for that matter or any library for that matter could do this acquiring knowledge and storing information so learning is different he says took a very trivial question but it is indeed a very insightful question a student asked him is there any need for a person to be serious here again i saw loud the way he gave this answer he says why not you can be serious with a smile on your face you can be serious when you look at a tree you can be serious when you paint the picture when you are listening to music you can be serious even with a smile on your face he says we all know the quality of mercy that shakespeare talks about in his merchant of venice here krishna murthy talks about the quality of seriousness i found it so engaging and interesting and enlightening the quality of seriousness this is a real gem from krishna murthy j krishna murthy i'd be happy if these lines are etched not only in the walls of our classrooms in our schools or colleges or universities but also in the minds and hearts of every individual who wishes to impact society for the better here krishna murthy says the quality of seriousness is to pursue to the very end a thought an idea a feeling to go to the very end of it not to be dissuaded by any other factor to inquire into every thought to the very end of it whatever may happen to you even if you have to starve in that process lose all your property everything to go to the very end of thought is to be serious then krishna murthy moves on to talk about a very interesting concept a very intimate concept the concept of love do you know what love is he asks his listeners i'm just trying to give snippets from what he gave as an answer do you know what it is to love people he asks to look after a tree to brush a dog comb it feed it means that you care for the tree you feel great affection for the dog he asks krishna murthy says i do not know whether you have noticed a tree in a street for which nobody cares occasionally people look at it and pass it by that tree is entirely different from a tree that is cared for in a garden a tree you sit under look at on which you see the leaves climb the branches such a tree grows with strength when you look after a tree when you give it water manure when you trim it prune it care for it it has a different feeling altogether from the tree that grows by the roadside the feeling of care is the beginning of affection he says i would like to end by giving three powerful quotes from j krishna murthy that i so loved and cherished a lot the first one is on understanding the whole of life krishna murthy says you must understand the whole of life not just one part of it that is why you must read that is why you must look at the skies why you must sing dance and write poems and suffer and understand for all that is life The second quote is a free mind never concludes a mind that is full of conclusions is a dead mind i repeat a mind that is full of conclusions is a dead mind it is not a living mind a living mind is a free mind learning never concluding the third 
quote begins like this revolution begins with you and me he says revolution must begin with you and me all great things start on a small scale all great movements begin with individuals and if we wait for collective action such action if it takes place at all is destructive and conducive to further misery so revolution must begin with you and me i repeat revolution must begin with you and with me says j krishnamurthy so why wait grab a copy of this book for yourself at the earliest possible this book is for you if you wish to live a meaningful harmonious and holistic life especially if you are an educator or a parent or a trainer for more information on j krishnamurthy you may access their website at kfionline.org thank you